All right, so we've been talking about a guy named Ken Wamabuni who uh, started uh, our style of karate, Shitaru. Um, and last week we kind of talked about his study of, of weapons and how important weapons was and all the different guys that he studied under and how he was always willing to, to learn under anybody, it didn't matter who it was. And uh, this week we're going to talk about some of his um, his research because he was really he was he wrote a few books. He was known for doing a lot of research into karate and uh, research on different kata he wrote books about and different articles on um, kumite and how to practice kata correctly. And um, so we kind of pick off pick up where we left off. It says, Mabuni also planned a book about Sochin and Kurunfa, which were or two uh, higher level kata. Um, to Mabuni, these kata have been a high of higher interest as they contain special grappling techniques, uncommon throws, and reverse headbutts to the solar plexus, among much more. Although the book was advertised in other publications, it was never written. Nonetheless, Mabuni is also in view of his publications, both quality and quantity, one of his era's leaders. All the pictures in his publications demonstrate his thereby outstanding technical level, and his techniques appear quite mature and acutely precise in their execution. So he's really good at what he did. Mabuni must have been almost obsessed by the art of the empty hand and must have had absorbed all available information like a sponge. The only thing he was audacious for was Budo, reports the son. He knew both, ele both elements of Shuri and Nahate like no other and combined them in his unique synthesis, Shitaru. So he, he took two different styles of Okinawan karate and blended them together because his two teachers were a master of each different one. Okay. The influence of the Aragaki school and Go Genki's Bai Hei Kwan can also be found in the style today. Mabuni's versatility is clearly evident by his use of an impressive 53 kata. In his time, this high amount of style-specific kata was unparalleled. It is most likely that Mabuni knew exactly about the uniqueness of his knowledge and that he made his selection especially to preserve a wide spectrum of kata for the upcoming generations. Maybe Mubuni also wanted to show the complexity and diversity of Rukyu's cultural kingdom, which was Okinawa, cultural heritage, and prevent further stereotyping of a farmer's fighting style. In view of Shitaru's amount of kata, one has to keep in mind that Mubuni himself never regarded a deep understanding of all of these kata as really important for the mastery of his, his style. Like Funakoshi, Mabuni was also an advocate of the Hito Kata Sanen maxim. Three years constant practice of one kata was during those days the amount many masters regarded as minimum until they taught the next one to their pupils. Mabuni too had this opinion and always recommended quality above quantity. So the idea was it, they would usually teach you one kata and you would spend three years working on that kata before they even taught you a second kata. So it'd be like learning Gohonouke and practicing Gohonouke only for three years. And then we teach you Shihonoro. Kind of crazy, isn't it? And the idea, and we, we say this a lot, even at the dojos, one kata every three years, it takes at least a minimum of three years to really master a kata. So I've been doing this for uh, 30 years. I, ha I should have like maybe only 10 kata mastered of all the kata that I know. So kind of crazy. Um, do, 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 do. In his book, Kobo Jizai Goshin Jutsu Karate Kempo, he wrote, in the past, there were few karate jutsu experts who knew many kata. If you specialize and study only a few kata, then you will be a serious karate jutsu student. Elsewhere, in Nakasone Genwa's Karate Kinkyu, Mabuni wrote, if practiced correctly, two or three kata are sufficient as your kata. All the others should be studied as a source of additional knowledge. 
breath, no matter how great, means little without depth. For Mabuni, the study of kata was always contained not only techniques alone, but their analysis of bunkai or the application with a partner. In his kata article in Karate Kinkyu, he wrote, kata must be practiced properly with a good understanding of their bunkai meaning. Similar to that, he wrote in another book, kata movement is meant to be used in a real encounter. Most likely also, in view of the various possibilities of kata bunkai, he advises the reader in Karate Do. Uh, in addition to that, the four pages of his article, Kumite Kukyu, can be easily traced to Shitaru's kata. Mabuni's statements concerning the application of techniques are, as always, especially in comparison to other contemporary publications, very detailed and offer a remarkable breadth and an astonishing depth. For example, in his study on Seipai, he not only demonstrates uh, striking, receiving, and kicking techniques, but also throwing, joint manipulation, and counter techniques against locks and grips. Also worthy of mention is Mabuni's counter against a rear shoulder lock on the basis of the Pinan Sandan form, which he presents in Karate Do Nyuman. Additionally, he wrote the same work wrote in the same work, the kata of Gojuru contained many interesting throws and joint locking techniques, which haven't been taught in Tokyo. The practitioners of the system should never neglect their study of these throws. Mabuni shifted his focus early on in the teaching and research of karate, already the foundation uh, of the Karate Kinkyukai in 1918 was a novelty in led to a remarkable association which incorporated various styles and accomplished a quality hey, of its members, which is still unequal. Hey, is All right, so beneath his enthusiasm in kata, Mabuni also had a lot of interest in karate's ability to be an instrument of physical education. One of the major targets of his work was also to promote the spread of karate under the aspect of health promotion in order to improve the well-being of the general population. Mabuni viewed karate as an excellent practice of physical education and constantly highlighted this very important aspect. In one of his books, he writes in great depth about the positive influence of karate training on body and mind. In cooperation with the with the medical university, he was able to even prove these effects partly by blood and urine tests. That's interesting. Another important cornerstone of his research is the first edition of the Bubishi in 1994. This legendary Chinese text has been transmitted over, transmitted over generations among Okinawan's karate masters and has had significant influence on the research and understanding of people like Higaona, Funakoshi, Itosu, Shimabakuro, and to many others uh, like Yamaguchi, Bubishi was the most treasured text, and Shojin Miyagi even called it the Bible of Karate. Now, Mabuni was without any doubt also one of karate's greatest visionaries. During a time when women were excluded absolutely in a karate dojo, Mabuni developed special concepts of self-defense for them. On request of the Japanese government, you guys hearing okay? Okay. On request of the Japanese government, Babuni together with Kunishi Yashuhiro and under the assistance of uh, Ueshiba Morihai devised the kata Green Willow or Aoyagi, which is one of the kata we have in our system. These special techniques of Mabuni Shitaru and Kunishi's jiu-jitsu encompasses and takes in consideration the anatomy of the fair sex. Mabuni's kata myojo is another product of this research in this field, which he even wanted to dedicate a special book to. Unfortunately, the project remained unfinished. In view of all these accomplishments, it is not surprising that Mabuni was held in such high esteem among both Japanese and Okinawan karate masters. In the field of weaponless fighting, he was commonly considered as an outspoken expert, as his son Kanaya reported later. His kata ability was especially well respected. According to his son Kenzo, 
Mabuni knew altogether more than 90 different kata. His other son indicates an even higher amount when he says that 70% of, his, of the kata his father had studied are lost in Okinawa today. Considering this, Funakoshi once said, if you want to know about kata, ask Kenwa Mabuni, and called him an outstanding, Bible, uh, outstanding Budo teacher and the richest source of karate jitsu technique and information in this era. Choki Motobu, one of Rukyu's kumite experts, said, for technique, there is none better than Kenwa Mabuni. In public, he was just known as Mabuni the technician. Mabuni's outstanding dedication attracted both respect and grudging respect. Because of his pleasant nature and his remarkable dedication to the art of karate, it was difficult for others to really hate or discredit him. Mabuni could have easily been a rich man several times over had he wanted to cash in on his popularity. He was liked by everyone, perhaps envied by some, but hated by no one. It is hard to form an opinion of Mabuni's fighting ability. In contrast to other Okinawan karate masters, there are not many reports about altercations in Mabuni's life. According to Sakagami Rusho and Mabuni's son Kanai, he should have had to use his skills quite frequently during his time as a policeman. Kanai also states that his father sometimes worked as a referee at Take Dameshi challenge fights or exchange of techniques. These fights usually took place on street corners and backyards and other places in the evening, uh, in the evenings or at night. They were usually witnesses and every technique was permitted. It should be pointed out that these events were primarily power struggles for the sake of learning so that the opponent wasn't beaten up mercil mercilessly. The main idea was to detect to detect strengths and balance weaknesses. According to another statement of his son, Mabuni himself would have been challenged frequently to such fights and usually accepted them. Similar to Funakoshi, Mabuni was also a strict opponent of free sparring or GU Kumite in his training. Nonetheless, he evidently experimented quite frequently with different types of protective gear. Mabuni also put a lot of emphasis on the practice of prearranged sparring. Although his main focus lay on the practice and analysis of kata, Mabuni understood the many shortcomings of training exclusively in kata for the mastery of karate. He wrote in his article, Kata wa tasha iku rinshu seyo, the correct practice of kata is the most important thing for a karate student. However, the karateka must never neglect kumite and makiwara practice. If the karateka, however, disregards kata training and concentrates completely on kumite and makiwara, then this, according to Mabuni, will lead to unexpected failure when the time comes to utilize your skill. So it's important to practice kumite, but you've got to practice your kata as well. In order to get the satis satisfactory results, Mabuni advises to train seriously and spend 50% of the training time on kata and 50% on additional practice. And that is part three of Mabuni. So we'll finish up next week with part four.